has grown more pronounced. The fervor has reached a new level, Tim Brent. Oh, Keith, I feel like I would have played today. I, there is nothing better than a football Saturday, especially with as much at stake as we have here with Oregon, Oregon State. Well, you've got bragging rights, you've got conference championship, you've got Rose Bowl, you've got all possibilities on the table. There is another game that's going to be played later today that will have some impact on what happens here. At 3.30 this afternoon, the Washington Huskies will be in Pullman playing Washington State. So in a, if Oregon State wins, I guess they're going to have to just sit and wait until that one's decided. No question about that. And I gu guarantee all the reservations at all these uh, sports <laughs> bars around town are taken. Everybody trying to get in to see that game. But keep this in mind, too. The Washington Huskies are banged up, especially at running back. In this game away from home, don't give it to the Huskies yet. The Oregon Ducks, on the other hand, some people wondered if their tank might be running a little low because they scraped their way through a lot of close, tough ball games, including one over at Arizona State at Tempe. It was a double overtime ball game, and it was a game that Oregon could have lost. But they won the ball game by almost a miraculous finish because... Arizona State's got the game in their pocket. All they got to do is take a couple of knees and the game is over. After Oregon has come down and failed to score on that pass to Peel. But then the freshman from Arizona State fumbles the ball. Oregon recovers and in an eye blink put it in the end zone to tie the game and take it to overtime. And then with a chance to win it on this play, the ball is slapped away from Todd Heap and the Ducks have dodged a bullet. But I'm they've not been sure doing that. I'm not sure, though, that games like that don't toughen you, don't make you a better ball club, especially when you come into a matchup like this that now is for the Roses. On the other hand, Oregon State has been rolling. Well, they have. And if you look at these two teams, I mean, they mirror each other, and they both have great running backs. And I'm convinced that the team that can run the football today will be the winner of this ball game. You start with Maurice Morris at Oregon. This is a guy that is a transfer from junior college, come, comes in here, seven touchdowns, never offers his body up fully to the tackler, He's only had one fumble in the last 238 carries, quality running back, and this guy will, in fact, be tested today. Now, Kenny Simonton on the other side, he is an outstanding running back who has gone over 1,000 yards now all three of his years in college football. 49 touchdowns for his career. He leads the Pac-10 in yards per game. He's eighth in the nation. He's a quality back. He's not a very big guy. Hide and seek runner. He'll hide behind those big linemen and seek the hole, then explode. He's a difference maker. The coaches are an important part of the story, too, and the big turnaround here in the Northwest for the Oregon teams. Let's go to Todd Harris for that part of the story. Well, Keith, it's taken a long time for these programs to get to this level. As recently as 1983, the Civil War was ugly. They played to a 0-0 tie, 11 turnovers, 4 fumbles, 4 missed field goals. It went on and on. Thankfully, that was the last Division 1A scoreless tie we've had since. Now, Oregon turned it around most recently under Mike Bellotti. He's been there for 12 years, six as a head coach, and he has some amazing stats. He has led the Ducks to five consecutive bowl games, a 15-2 mark in the month of November, and 24-8 and in games divided, decided by a touchdown or less. Now, Coach yep. Dennis Erickson came here two years ago. His first year here, he got the Beavers back on a winning track, their first winning season in 28 years. He has been to four Division I teams where he is head coach, and he's got two national titles at Miami. Gentlemen, I would definitely put both these men high on your list of Coach of the Year candidates. Keith. All right, Todd, thanks very much. The sun is out bright. It's going to get up to into uh, the 40s before the shadows start reaching across the field here at Reeser Stadium on the campus of Oregon State. It's been a long time since they've had this kind of, of feeling around this part of the country where they've had this much at stake on a game that is called here the Civil War. And that is, uh, it really doesn't fit the description of the real thing as we know it in American history, but uh, it's a pretty good sized fist fight anyway. You know, Oregon State comes out, they'll be on defense first. Here we are in a game called the Civil War, and they've got defensive ends named Grant and Jackson. You've got to love that. <laughs> Everywhere you look these days, there's a Jackson. <laughs> All right, Oregon State will be kicking off, and the Oregon Ducks will be wearing the white uniforms. Sesco, Ryan Sesco will kick it away to Alan Amundsen and Jermaine Hensbard. The Ducks will be in the home deck. They play on artificial turf here. The 
field is new and it is fast. And both these teams are loaded with speed, offensively and defensively. The kick is a good one, carrying down to the three-yard line, where it is taken by Hensbard. And he's shirt-tailed and brought down at about the 23-yard line. Joey Harrington will come out at quarterback for the Oregon Ducks, and he has taken charge of this team of late, responding brilliantly in six successive games that have been so very close, two of them in overtime. The Beavers walking around on the field and waving their arms and saying to the crowd, hey, this is our house. Let's make it as tough as we can make it on them. You have to be careful, Keith, at this point in the game. Emotion can get in the way of concentration. You have to channel that into a positive funnel. Look at the lineup Oregon sends out for the opening game. Three wideouts at the top. Now they're going to throw it downfield, and they've got a man cutting across the middle of the field, and it is incomplete, and he may have been tripped. Keenan Howry threw the ball. The intended receiver was the tight end, Justin Peel, and he couldn't quite reach it. But it was within a whisker of producing a big play. But not bad coverage by Weathersby. He wasn't fooled by this. He sees that it's a flanker throwback. Get it over to the flanker. Now, Weathersby has some pretty good coverage here. Now, you'll see their feet tangle, but it's in incidental because Weathersby's making a break on the ball. The feet get tangled. He goes down. Good no flag. Second down and 10 for the Oregon Ducks. That's a pretty good pass, by the way, as a matter of fact. This is Maurice Morris, and Morris runs into number one, DeLorence Grant, and number five, Darnell Robinson. This defense will run to the football. It is extremely aggressive, extremely fast. They take chances, high risk, high reward. But when you do that, a lot of times you're playing with reckless abandon and you overwhelm the offense. Jason Bullis is on the field now for Oregon at a wide out spot. Number 88. Back goes Joey Harrington to throw, dumps it off to Morris. Morris has blockers in front of him. Morris is down the sidelines to about the 42-yard line before he is knocked out. It is first down for the Oregon Ducks. Terrence Carroll made the tackle for the Beavers. So well designed, it's a throwback screen. Everybody goes one way, now watch. He'll just look to the right, just throw right there to Morris on the screen. They have all run out of there now. They've sent receivers deep they took the corners out of there so it was wide open spaces enough for the first gain of 21 yards on the play Howry is the man at the bottom of the picture and back goes Harrington on the little delay hands the ball off and Morris is able to break the first tackler but the second one got him and nailed it Eric Manning and uh, Ryan Atkinson, they're the two inside men on the defensive front for Oregon State, and they've been playing very well. Keith, this is a great example of what makes a solid defense. Let it roll, and you'll see that there is pursuit everywhere. Now, the first guy, you mentioned Manning and Atkinson. Okay, well, there's the Atkinson miss, but look at the pursuit coming. Here comes Manning, here comes Edwards, then here comes Allen. All those guys, great pursuit, makes for a super solid defense. So far, Maurice Morris is minus five. And carrying the ball, Harrington rolls it out, gets the heat on him, penalty flag is away, and it is caught by number five, Marshawn Tucker, who has been a very dependable receiver of late with 46 catches, that being 47. But the flag was thrown back there where the ball was released, and it's going to be against Oregon for holding. So the Ducks hurt themselves. Well, not only was there holding, the rest of the play was a play of almost. Harrington was almost sacked, and the ball was almost intercepted. The referee today is Jim Springer. Offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Mike Bellotti, in six seasons down at Eugene, has gone 15 and 2 in the month of November. I'm going to make an early request. I want somebody to keep track of the number of times the, the flags are on the field. Down. A game like this with two aggressive football teams, you're going to have a lot of flags. On the 29 yard line now for the Oregon Ducks, it is second down and 23. Opening quarter, just getting on the way. 
Duncan slipped a little bit. Now he's set. Back on the 20 yard line, and it's DeLawrence Grant. Firing these two ends for Oregon State are very quick, big men. Ladarius Jackson in the game last week at Tucson ran down Ortiz Jenkins. I mean, he just outran him. So they are very quick. Not only are they quick, they're strong, and they have great technique. They'll use swim moves, they'll use power moves, they'll use a bull rush. Oftentimes they get there, and they're taking their defender or their offensive blocker right with them. So it's third and 32 now as Oregon has the ball back at its own 20. And they call timeout. Key two things we've seen early. We've seen great containment and pressure by the defensive ends. Jackson and Grant, you mentioned great penetration up the middle by Manning and Atkinson. The linebackers are filling, and there's been terrific coverage in the secondary. Right now, Oregon State's feeling pretty good about itself. Watson Stadium is renowned for its sound effects, its impact on the game, and particularly the visiting team. Well, what's it like here? Here's Todd. Well, Keith, it is extremely noisy. The fans have not settled down. Now, there's a big debate is what's the toughest place to play in the Pac-10 on a recent Pac-10 website. They said that Sun Devil Stadium was the toughest place with Eugene coming in second. But I know that doesn't sit well here in Corvallis. This place only holds about 35,000. But on the field today, it sounds more like about 70,000. It is extremely noisy. And this field, the, the bleachers of the stands are, are quite flat. It's surprising that it's this noisy. But uh, that's what fervor will do for you. It's not a big stadium, and I said yesterday, I made the mistake by saying, what a charming place. A couple of beavers almost jumped me. So what are you, crazy? This is an intimidating place. The Oregon State defense leads the Pac-10, and you're getting to see why. Just remember this, speed kills, and there's a lot of speed on defense for Oregon State. Well, Dennis Erickson's on record saying that he feels the, the backbone of his team is on the defensive side of the ball. So third down and 32, Harrington under siege. Ball get set there on the ricochet by Jake Cookus. And Oregon State's first possession is going to be deep in the country inside the 20-yard line. Pass intended for Keenan Howry. Ball knocked away by Terrence Carroll. Intercepted by Jake Cookus. And as he goes down at the 20-yard line, penalty flags all over the place. This is a ball that should not have been thrown by Harrington. You see 44 right there? Right now, he's locked on Howry. Here comes the ball. Now watch this. Howry's looking at the ball. He never even sees Carroll coming. Carroll drills him. And then, of course, the tip. Now it's the old tip drill. You practice that every day in practice. They pick it off. Now he's yelling, fire, fire, fire. Oski, everybody looks for a white jersey to pick up, get a block, and a good return. On the intercepting team, 15-yard penalty, first down 10. So Oregon State hurts themselves by committing a 15-yard penalty personal foul, which will take the ball back to the 33-yard line, 32-yard line. They would have had it down inside the 20. They have been flagged a lot this year. Oregon State's had a considerable number of penalty flags thrown, but that's a byproduct of the ferocity with which they play defense. So first and 10 from, let's say, the 33. The ball is handed off to Ken Simonton, who is one of the top running backs in the country and the first back ever to accumulate the kind of yardage he has in his first three years. The quarterback for Oregon State, Jonathan Smith, the walk-on, red-shirted, worked his way off the scout team, has a record of 17 and 8 as a starter, and the coaches say this junior probably will wind up one of these days on the sideline a coach himself because he is a student of the game and he knows the system, and it's a single back system. Smith hands, inside goes Simonton. And you really got to watch this guy because he has great vision, he has great feet, and he is hard to handle. 
And a penalty flag now is thrown down inside the 30 yard line. That's unsportsmanlike. Probably got a goodly bit of trash talking going around in the early stages of the ball game. And the old traditionals, that's almost always the case. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, offense. All right, that's dead ball, personal foul, defense. Penalties offset. This is uh, an officiating crew that doesn't uh, stand much truck. They'll drop the flag on you real quick. Well, especially in a game like this, and they will do that for several reasons. They'll do it, number one, to maintain control. And in a game like that, you really have to. Yeah, you do. This one uh, could blow up real quick. So the state of Oregon now joins us as we have been working the game for pay-per-view, but now we're starting to accumulate our audience as the Michigan-Ohio State game is finally over. Took a long time to settle that, but it's up. Bill Dart, 12 touchdown. Oregon State, Robert Prescott, the possession receiver. The slot back came across the middle. He was wide open, and he goes 31 yards for a touchdown. So the Beavers strike first. Well, it's nothing but a, just a quick slant, skinny post, and the ball was right there by Smith. It was no question he was going to Prescott from the get-go, so he didn't have to go through a progression, didn't have to read. He just put it there on a dart. So despite the personal foul call that set him back, the Oregon State Beavers cash in the turnover. The kick is good by Seska and Oregon State at 10.03 to go in the first quarter is out to a 7 to nothing lead. Dennis Erickson 0-3 against Oregon, having gone 0-2 at Washington State, lost last year 25-14. When we talked with him yesterday, just very composed, knows that he has his team right where he wants them, and he's very confident in what they can do. At game time, uh, we were told the temperature is 33 degrees, but the fog that has uh, been around most of the day beginning to burn off now, and you can really see Mary's Peak on the coast range behind us. So it really turned out to be a picture-perfect autumn afternoon in the Willamette Valley. Well, with that said, Keith, you've got quarter, one-fourth of the field now in shade. And as that shade continues to cover the field, it will get colder and colder. And the ball will get slicker and harder. Ryan Seska, a sophomore from Manhattan Beach, California, will kick it off to Alan Amundsen and Jermaine Hansbard. As Oregon State goes to the lead, 7 to nothing. High kick. At the six-yard line, it's Hansbart. He comes to the near sideline again, trying to get a wall over here and gets a pretty good return out of it. He gets it up to about the 30-yard line. Racer Stadium is not that big. The capacity is no question under some strain today. <laughs> They'll probably wind up with a little over 35,000, maybe 36,000 here today. Ball is going to be put on the 29-yard line where it is a first down for the University of Oregon Ducks. So Harrington was harassed considerably in their first possession. And Morris unable to do anything on the ground. They start with Morris. And a little bit of room on the left side, maybe three yards as he gets to about the 32. Boy, terrific play by Ryan Atkinson. He's the defensive tackle. He engages the offensive lineman and just slides right on down with the tackle. Watch number 90. He'll be at the left of your screen. See, he gets him down low. The linebackers then come and hit him high. That's as good as it gets right there. Here's a look at Atkinson, 6'6", 280 pounds, and he's been very active already in this first quarter. Second down and long six. Harrington's pass thrown right on the money to Alan Amundsen. Out of the backfield, the tailback. And uh, Darnell Robinson gets his second tackle of the ball game. And the gain is to, let's see, about the 38-yard line. They're a yard short of the first down. It was a good-looking play, but I want to tell you that's an outstanding defensive 
tackled by Darnell Robinson because even though he chased him across the field, kept him a yard and a half shy of the first down stick. Robinson, the man calling the defensive signals for Oregon State. There's a redshirt freshman playing that middle backer position, and he has been outstanding. They try inside for the first down, and they're going to have it as they get the momentum across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Rick Siegler, as a redshirt freshman uh, out of Las Vegas, Nevada, has 204 pounds at 6'3". He's been a dynamite player for them this year, better than they thought he was going to be. Yeah, that's the key. I, he's really played well, but unexpectedly. I mean, his, he's quick, he's aggressive, he's mean, and I don't think anybody anticipated what he's doing. And on that 6'3 frame, as young as he is, he's bound to weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of 225 as the years go along. They're after Morris. He got one block, but the pursuit, look at it. And James Allen with the man that takes the play out of bounds. Harrington threw the block that got him about six yards. Again, I'm going to use the word pursuit, though. I, I, they, black jerseys just chase him all over the field. Now, right here, it looks like he may get the corner. But all of a sudden, he says, whoop, here we come. And look, 51 Siegler's chasing him down. But then you got the DBs come up. And here comes number 34 out of, the, out of nowhere. And he makes a hit. That's Allen. You're right. Great pursuit. Second down and eight for Oregon. Oregon State leading 7-0 in the first quarter. Eight minutes to play. Harrington going down the field, and it is incomplete. He went to the vertical game looking for Marshawn Tucker. He had him, but he couldn't deliver the ball to him. He was covered by Keith Hayward Jack Johnson, and uh, Terrence Carroll was in the neighborhood, number 44. But Johnson, he was out a couple of days ago with a, a classroom of kids talking to them, showing them things, and visiting. He's, he's an interesting young man and a very entertaining young man who's having a good time going to college. Speaking about being out and amongst them, Mr. Keith Jackson here at Corvallis has been out amongst them for several days now. The whole town's excited. I've had so many free meals, I feel like I'm going to do. Watch out for the clock. Play clock just got it off. Pass is thrown high to the sidelines and over the head of the intended receiver, Keenan Howard. Ball slipped out of the hand of Harrington when he let it go. Keith, when you let that play clock get down and all of a sudden you have to rush it, two, one, snap, everything that starts then is out of sync. Then you're trying to rush everything you do until the play is over. Fourth down, and here's Curtis Doerr. One of the better punters in the Pac-10 this year. Has pinned a lot of people deep. Bush Manzada is waiting for it. TJ standing back at his 17. Partially blocked, looked like. Well, he didn't touch the football, so it'll be a flag. There's a flag down there, so apparently he, they didn't touch the football. Well, it looked yeah. like the way it came out of there, it came out end over end, but uh, they pick up the flag. It was tipped. The there ball turned from a spiral to end over end, so somebody had to hit it. And it looked like it was James Newsom. But it wound up a pretty good kick because being a, an end over end kick, it's going to be a tail dragger hitting the ground and running a long way. Threw the flag immediately. There's where the ball was tipped. And then the flag came out of the pocket, and they said, wait a minute, we're going to pick that ball baby back up because, in fact, it was tipped. It winds up a 45-yard punt. So the second possession for the Oregon State Beavers is going to be back around their 13-yard line. Jonathan Smith out of the shotgun. Looks and goes underneath the coverage. The ball dumped off to Martin Maurer. A tight end, and Maurer may have lost control of the ball. Oregon saying, we've got it. The officials apparently don't agree. Martin Maurer's daddy, Andy, played at the University of Oregon. And here's his son excelling at Oregon State. Same kind of relationship exists between these schools as you would have at a USC, UCLA, which is kind of cross town. Makes up tough holiday dinners. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, they're 
The Oregon State Beavers, as we get the rest of our audience now, control the football. Ken Simonton just carried it. Oregon State has the lead in the ball game by a score of seven to nothing on a 31-yard scoring strike from Jonathan Smith to uh, Robert Prescott. And they got it off of a turnover and uh, with six minutes and 54 seconds to play in the first quarter, the Beavers have the ball and have the lead seven to nothing. The ball is now resting at the 24-yard line, second down and nine. Give it to Simonton, who is the top rusher in the Pac-10 conference, and they've stopped him for a yard loss. Well, you want to sum this game up in one word, vicious. Watch this. Here comes a hook by Terrence Carroll. Tremendous hit. Cookus picks it off, sets up great field position for Smith to Prescott. Quick slant, skinny post, 31-yard touchdown, and that's where we are. Tremendous hit, tip drill, interception, and Smith capitalized to Prescott with a strike. The Oregon State defense has uh, pretty much controlled the Oregon Ducks so far in this game. You've got Simonton now, who's up at the top of your picture. Third down and ten. And now timeout is called by Oregon State. That is their first timeout. At five minutes and 58 seconds to play in the first quarter, they call it the Civil War in the state of Oregon. It is third down and 10. You see the, the bright line there across the field. That's where they've got to go to get their first down. First and 10 is presented by Pacific Life. They'll go to the shotgun with Jonathan Smith now, and he will have Chad Johnson, who has not seen the ball yet. Ushman Zada has not seen the ball yet as a receiver. They're both good. Down the sideline intended for his tight end, Martin Mauer. And there's a penalty flag. The Oregon man, uh, Bowman, is applauding on the play. Let's see which way the foul is called. I don't know why he'd be applauding. He was bumping and grinding all the way. He <laughs> never even looked back. Pass <laughs> interference. Defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. There's his right, right hand with a push. And then the dive, but they were bumping and grinding all yeah. the way down, and he really never even looked back for the ball. He just kept pushing and shoving, knowing that he was beaten. The foul was on Wesley Mallard, who was defending on the play. They don't, he, he's not going to throw a whole lot of balls in the neighborhood of uh, Rashad Boom, but he's accepted in the league as one of the best cover guys around. So it's a first down, and you get contact along the line of scrimmage, and there is another foul. That's five flags already here in the first quarter, and tempers flaring early. Jed Boyce came across the line like a 18-wheeler going downhill. No play. Dead ball. Offside defense. Five-yard penalty. The Chile starting lineup for Oregon State. The backs and receivers keep your eye on number 35 now. As we noted, sometimes you see him, sometimes you don't. He had, has had three successive 1,000-yard seasons. First man ever to do it out here. Offensive front, all zone blocking. Gibson, Cornell, and White. That's usually where the backs will go when it's must yardage time for the Beavers. Right now, it's first down and five for Oregon State at their own 43. They lead by a score of seven to nothing. With 5.53 to play in the first quarter. Here comes the reverse. It is Chad Johnson carrying. Not much. This is a top line scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Michael Collier made the tackle for the Oregon defense. Third in the conference. Along the front, Jason Nicolau is in there at a defensive end. At the other end, Saul Patu. Those two are tough. Linebackers, the Beavers think they can run on Oregon. And these are the people who say, no, you can't. Smith in the middle, he's been a rock. Secondary, sophomore free safety, Rasuli Webster stepped up big this year. Bowman is the cover. Smith plays everywhere. Here's another penalty flag. How about four penalty flags? Jed Boyce jumped across early. We said before, emotion gets in the way of concentration. There's no question they're antsy. Play. Dead ball, offside, defense. Five-yard penalty. And again, it's Jed Boyce. That should be a first down. The 
a second down. It's still second down. Didn't quite get it. He lost a little bit on that reverse. So that's the difference. Call it a yard, second down, and one. They run it. Simonson, and he almost knocked it. Gets it across midfield of the Oregon 49-yard line. Dell Game Solutions now. Both teams, both coaches, here's what to say. I think they have the one of the most potent running attacks in the league, the, most, the best offense. We have to shut them down. We have to slow them down, find a way to stop uh, Simonton and McCall. It's, it's in the running game. Whoever can run the football the best and most consistently, I really believe, will win the football game. Who will handle it physically up front. Dennis Erickson, Oregon State. Mike Pilotti, Oregon. First down for the Beavers. Right now, the Beavers have control of the game as Jonathan Smith puts air under it downfield. Pass is caught by Prescott again. Into the end zone he goes. 13 to nothing, Oregon State. No flag. He got away from Ryan Mitchell. What a great read by Jonathan, Jonathan Smith, who actually waited for Prescott to clear and then put air under the ball and just lobbed it out there. Seska going for his 80th consecutive extra point. He made it. And with four minutes and 27 seconds to play in the first quarter, it is now Oregon State 14, Oregon nothing. Here are the possibilities in this game. Oregon can win the Pac-10 championship in the Rose Bowl trip if they can get out of this hole they're into now, trailing 14 to nothing, and beat the Beavers. If Oregon State wins, then they have to have some help from Washington State in order to win the trip to the Rose Bowl. High, soft, short kick. And it's... Penalty flags all over the field as the return is made by Jermaine Hensbard, and Hensbard brings it up across the 35 to near the 40. So let's see about the flag. Push in the back. That's the most common foul being called these days at all levels of football, I think. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by the 2001 Aztec from Pontiac, quite possibly the most versatile vehicle on the planet. Chili's Ranch Hand Filet, tender, juicy, flame-grilled, and served on a bed of awesome blossom string. Courtyard by Marriott, the hotel designed by business travelers, and National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. So the penalty really damages the field position for the Oregon Ducks, being a spot foul comes all the way back to the 15-yard line instead of having it out at the 40. You see the number of flags that have been thrown. Oregon just has to settle down now, gain its composure, get in the flow. They go to the ground game with uh, Maurice Morris. This time he finds a little daylight, gets out to the 23-yard line. Gilly's starting lineup for the Ducks, backs and receivers. Number nine is Morris. He had 1,009 yards coming into this ball game. Tucker and Howry. 46 and 43 receptions, respectively. Offensive line, people move around a lot here. Lee Gundy, for example, played both tackles and guard once this season in the same game. But he just kind of goes wherever they say and, uh, and does the jump. And off his inside, there's nothing doing or nothing. Josh Ryan carries the ball, and the Oregon State defense, which has been dominant so far in this game, stuffed him. We told you about the uh, defensive ends, Grant and Jackson. They'll become more and more obvious as the day goes on. But that is a real good foursome up front. The uh, linebackers, the young freshman, the red shirter in the middle, Siegler, very good. Robinson and Allen flank him. And the secondary, Dennis Weathersby, the right corner is their best cover. This is a group that's unafraid of man coverage. They don't mind playing man at all. Especially now, the Oregon's been unable to get the running game going, so now they are really confident in the passing game. 
Washington. A little flip pass outside. And he got him one on one and he got loose. And Maurice Morris throws the shiver as he goes out of bounds and he may get flagged for it. Weathersby was coming across to make the play. He got away from Jackson, Darius Jackson. Here's the call on the penalty. It looked like he might have thrown a forearm. And it is, so that'll be the second penalty against Oregon State. It's against Oregon, isn't it? Well, see, he marched it the wrong way. Now they bring it back. They yeah. saw it. So it's the sixth penalty against Oregon. Yeah, Oregon, uh, Morris was the guy that threw the forearm. Dead ball after the play was over. First goal foul, offense, 15-yard penalty, first down. You see him march it off the wrong way, he was confused. Now they get it straight, take a look at it right at the end of the play. He's out of bounds right now, and now here comes the push and the shove, way out of bounds, and the flag comes immediately by the field judge. But of course, that play, Ladarius Jackson had great coverage, really should have made the tackle, he knows it, missed the tackle and allowed the big game. He still got enough out of the run, though, to give him a first down, even with the penalty. So the ball sets up on the 38-yard line with Alan Amundsen now in at the single back position for the Ducks. He has the ball. And it looks like they want to run left. They want to go left-handed against uh, the Oregon State defense. And uh, Terrence Carroll came across to make the defensive play there. Keith, strong safeties in today's game are the best athletes on the field, bar none. With the high-powered spread attacks that you see now in college football strong safeties they've got a cover they've got a blitz and they have to act like linebackers Carroll that time was set up like a linebacker came over and I mean delivered a terrific lick second down and seven Joey Harrington wants to go deep with it Intercepted by Jake Cookus. That's his second interception of the day. That's two ricochets, and now you got a penalty flag thrown back up here as, as uh, Harrington, the quarterback, said something to the referee, and Jim Springer flagged him for it. The ball, however, belongs to Oregon State. You talk about a great read, though, on the interception by Cookus. He leads him there with his eyes, never comes off the receiver, and in 31, Cookus makes a terrific pick. But then watch the late hit coming in. Did somebody hit Harrington? Yeah, here's, here's Joey. Now, here comes the, the late that hit. That is really late. And that's Manning. Yeah. And that's way after the play. When uh, Harrington gets up now, he says something to Jim Springer, and after I didn't know play, whether he would flag him for that or for the late hit. On the intercepting team, 15-yard penalty, first down 10. So Eric Manning, big sophomore from Compton, gets a flag thrown to him, and it costs his team 15 yards. Back in Corvallis, Oregon, Jonathan Smith stands up and short hops it to uh, Chad Johnson. That's an incomplete forward pass. It was thrown forward. There have been three personal fouls called in the game, and in one instance, we had personal fouls offsetting. But that one really hurt them because that moved them. They were up near midfield at one point, and that 15-yarder on the late hit on Harrington. Joey seems to be all right. Keith, that'll drive a coach nuts, though. Those are those are just dumb fouls. You don't want those in a game like this. Obviously, emotions are high, but you've got to maintain your composure. Ball's on the 31-yard line. That's Prescott in motion. He scored the two touchdowns that Oregon State has. This is a McCall carrying the ball. Patrick McCall. Junior out of Pomona and a transfer from the University of Michigan carrying the ball. Two minutes and three seconds to go in the first quarter. 14 to nothing, Oregon State. Bucks ranked fifth in the BCS ranking. High in all the national polls. This is Prescott. He's their possession receiver, the slot back. He just goes out there in an open spot, sits until Jonathan Smith finds him, and then he's gone. Well, the inside receiver always is the possession guy because he's got most of the field to work with. He's got more field than anybody else out there because he's the inside receiver. He's sitting down well, though, and he sure has had the hot hand, although he pulled up too early this time. He's got to get down past the stakes before it curls. And he stops at the... 39, leading two yards for the first down, which brings in Mike Fessler, the punter, with Keenan Howry waiting for Oregon. 
Low line drive. If it bounces straight, he might have a chance of returning it, but it doesn't. It wobbles around, and now finally will roll dead down at the 19-yard line. There, Oregon will have the ball. They're in trouble at 106 to go in the first quarter. They trail 14 to nothing. Monday night on ABC, must win for the Washington Redskins against the St. Louis Rams. That'll be live at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. And then Sunday night on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific, Jacksonville Jaguars and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Oregon Ducks yet to get much going in the way of offense. Down 14 to nothing. There's Cookus. He has two interceptions already in this ball game. Joey Harrington turns and gives to Maurice Morris. They sort of bumped into each other, and Joey wound up tumbling on the turf. And there's about a yard gain by Morris. Joey Harrington, 13 and 1 as a starter, really struggling today. As a matter of fact, he's thrown two interceptions and he's led the defender there both times. First one, just a great hit by Carroll here, knocks the ball loose. And if, but you see three defenders there, and Cookus makes the pick. Then this was a good throw, but a great read by Cookus, who had terrific coverage and broke on the ball immediately. But a lot of that is because Harrington is looking at the intended receiver and he's not looking away. He's leaving them there with his eyes. Cookus is starting today in place of Calvin Carlisle, who uh, has a sprained foot. Short drop by Harrington. Quick shot going hard, too low, can't catch it. Intended for Justin Field, the tight end. So it'll be third down and eight. So far in this ball game, Oregon State looks like it's in the Oregon huddle. They look like they know the play that's coming. They've stopped the run cold. And because Oregon's not able to run, every time they pass, Oregon State is all over it. Harrington is 2 of 7, 26 yards and 2 picks. The two touchdowns have been scored. That's got the slot back for Oregon State. Yeah, but how about the Ducks? Three possessions, interception, punt, interception. Here we go again with third and long. Pressure coming, steps away from it, goes deep. Got his man. It's LaCorey Collins. A second tight end with Terrence Carroll. Strong safety who covers the tight end when he comes out of there. And he's going to have his first down. He avoided a pretty good rush, too, by Ladarius Jackson. Stepped up into the pocket, and I mean put it on a frozen rope liner right to him. And Collins made a good catch. The uh, second half has been uh, Harrington's time, though, over the last six games. And in the fourth quarter particularly. It is a first down at the 44. Air under it. Down the sideline. The pass is incomplete. Keenan Howe covered by Keith Hayward Johnson. And the first quarter is over. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and the word from our ABC station. This old rivalry started in 1894. And they call it the Civil War of Oregon. L.H. Gregory, the sports editor of the Oregonian, back in the 20s, hung that title on it and stuck. Pretty good title, the way they're playing today. No Oregon wide receiver has caught a pass today. Collins is tight end, so it's one to the tight end, two to the running backs. Harrington's got to get his wide receivers involved in the game. Second down and 10 from the 44-yard line. 14 to nothing, Oregon State. And the ball is swung out to the tailback, Amundsen. And he is close to a first down. We're off to New York City, Times Square Stadium, and John Saunders. The Oregon Ducks, if they can uh, sail the rough waters and survive for the moment and get back into this ball game, winning this game, they would go to the Rose Bowl themselves. If it's a three-way tie, then the Washington Huskies will go on the tiebreaker. Ball is handed off to Amundsen. He cuts back, finds daylight, and will pick up the better part of six yards on that carry. Thanksgiving Saturday, ABC Sports. 
as this college football action at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Notre Dame and Southern California, one of the great intersectional rivalries of all time. And, of course, everybody is talking about the possibility of Notre Dame getting into the BCS. And the game will be played here on ABC Sports over the Bowl Championship Series. If the Irish are 9-2 and two and ranked 12th or better, then I guess they get a ticket. Second down and four. Lob down field, and it is incomplete. Running yeah, down under the ball point. was the tight end, LaCorey Collins, but he was double covered. Hayward Johnson and Carroll both there. Keep the Ducks when we saw them last time. Average six yards on first down. Well, it's dropped a little bit. Now they're down around five yards of first down, which means on second down, you go to that page in the playbook that says full throttle. You can do almost anything, run or pass. This was the first time in this series they got six yards on first down, so they were able to go to a pass on second down. Unfortunately, it wasn't well ex executed, but it was the first time that they had first down success. Third down and four for this snap. Little option action. The ball is pitched back. And uh, it's going to be first down as Morris got to the sideline that had enough room to plant and cut and move the chains. First down, when you pick up big yardage, it really makes a difference. Now you go to a pass. You come back with an option. Here comes Morris. Morris gets around the corner and dodges one blocker for the first. And this is the best drive that Oregon has had in this ballgame. I mean, at times this year, this has been a phenomenal ball control, possession time, attack. They had 86 plays against UCLA, but this is the first inkling of that we've seen today. From the 34, first down. Now they go back again to the tailback, and now Morris getting a little bit of blocking on the right side of the line. He is starting to move. He's a big, strong guy, but he's been pretty well beat up because making the change from junior college he came out of Fresno City College and coming to Division 1A at this level, it's a step. Well, it's, it's ironic. Earlier this week, we're talking to the coaches. We said, what is wrong with Morris? Is he banged up? And they said, yeah, well, and they started reading us a list. Ribs, shoulder, bruise. Uh, he's got bruises up and down his legs. He's got sore ankles. He's, he's taking a whacking. But he's a tough guy. He's got it again. And he's down right on the 30-yard line. where they've got to go there, the bright yellow line. That's the first down line, and first and ten presented by Pacific Life. Alan Amundsen is in now. And they're not going to give, uh, it looks like, uh, Morris the 30 carries that he is capable of having, even more in time to pass, because he is sore. And they are in pretty healthy for the fourth quarter, I'm sure. Here's the ball thrown out to Amundsen. Amundsen will get down to about the 25, but he looks short of his first down. Good read by Hayward Johnson to come up and make the tackle. You know, the Ducks run traps and rams and double teams, and they try to spring Morris every which way they can. But so far, the offensive line has not been able to pound down and wear down the Oregon State defense at all. It still looks like. The Beavers are just bouncing around and controlling the line of scrimmage. They're going for three here with Josh Frankel coming on. He has hit four of his last five field goals. And he got some help from the lady who was the golf coach, former golf coach at Oregon. 44-yard try with Harrington doing the holding. It's not good. He got it very high, didn't have much drive in it. And it was wide left. 12-15 to go in the first half. Still 14-0 Oregon State. Oregon State gets the football. First down at their own 27-yard line. They lead 14-0. 12-15 to go in the first half. We're on the campus of Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon. For this one, and Jonathan Smith going deep down the middle. Caught by Chad Johnson at the 29-yard line of Oregon. Rashad Bowman was 
Davis covering on the play, and Johnson just made a spectacular catch. Boy, it was well set up, too. They made it look like a counter, and then he just ran a long, deep post. Now, watch him lay out for this ball. It looked like he was overthrown. Johnson goes completely layout for it and makes a spectacular catch. 44 yards on the play. Boy, he is explosive. A senior from Miami, Florida. Found his way to City College out here. Paul Patu, the tackle on Ken Simonson. They've handled Simonson pretty well today. So far. You're talking about Chad Johnson and the catch he made. We're talking with Dennis Erickson yesterday. We're talking with Tim Lapano, the offensive coordinator, and they said the light went on for Chad Johnson about halfway through the season. He now knows how to run his routes. He now understands the offense, and he now understands how to go for the football. Well, folks, he went for the football on that catch. He made a catch last week that was incredible in the Arizona game, too. Second down and 13 after the loss by Simonson. And Jonathan Smith from Glendora, California, out of the shotgun, a little pressure. Gets it away in complete. Not a bad pass right there, though. That's a pretty good pass to throw it away incomplete. Everybody was covered. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific ABC Sports will wrap up its college triple header for the battle of old rivals, Florida and the Florida State. Here on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. They're playing it in Tallahassee where it's rain and cold. And a city burdened by a massive amount of indecision, apparently. And uh, argument. Oregon's won 15 of its last 16. Eight in a row, second longest win streak in the country behind Oklahoma. Smith, with all day, throws high and And there's the penalty flag. The pass was intended for Johnson. Defending on the play was Ryan Mitchell. You know, Ryan Mitchell did interfere, Keith, but I don't think that ball was catchable. It was sailing, and I don't think he could have gotten that ball even if he was not touched. Well over his head. Yeah, they, they've... They've got to look at this, talk about it, and pick up a flag, but I, they're not going to do it. They're going to say he had a chance to get to it. There's no question Ryan Mitchell hit him. Watch number 24 come right there, and there's the contact before the ball ever gets there, but the ball was sailing high. It looked like it actually got away from Smith. You look at this and see if he could have caught that thing. There is no way that he could have caught that. Defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. Harold Carmichael could not have made that catch. <laughs> Or Bill Russell. <laughs> At seven penalties on Oregon now for 74 yards. But only the first one this quarter. So they're starting to settle down a little bit. But this is a big one. That puts Oregon State down on the 17 with the first down. They lead 14 to nothing. 21 point deficit at halftime is big time. This is Simonson. And we'll get two down to the 15 before Jed Boyce gets a piece of him. Keith, I'll tell you this. Oregon's a little bit out of sync. There's no question about it. They're not used to being down two touchdowns early. But when you get their defense backed up in the red zone, it is very tough to score against them. Look at this. Here's the red zone this season. They've allowed 16 trips. But, I mean, you don't get in very often when you're down in there. And as a matter of fact, you don't even get in there very often. Second down and eight. Ball right on the 15. Smith. Goes to the corner of the end zone, and that's too long. Intended for Martin Maurer. Smith is a quarterback who's only 5'10", so he has to either throw it high, or he's got to find a crease to throw it through. Yeah, I was talking to a defensive coordinator this week who played against... Oregon State, and he said he's the best alley throw he's ever seen. And I said, what the heck is that? And he says, well, it's so small, he's got to find an alley between the, the linemen to throw it, and he does that very well. I saw Dennis Erickson yesterday was talking about the first time he met him. When Smith walked into his office, he thought he was the manager. Well, he's one of those guys that like, work you're not thinking. You let him give the ball away. That's the point. You may not pass for the big high percentage, but you won't give it away too many times. That goes deep into the corner of the end zone. That one is overthrown too, but there's no way in the world the defender could get to it. Bowman covering on the play against Chad Johnson. Well, Johnson won the last battle. This time, Bowman comes away winning it. 
Now we're going to get a field goal try from Ryan Seska. Ryan Seska, in the year 2000, has kicked 13 field goals in 15 tries. The long one was 49 yards against Stanford. This one is only 32 yards. Snapper is Tim Murdoch. The holder is Mike Fessler. The punter, the kick is away. Plenty long and good. So at 10 10 to go in the first half, it is Oregon State now 17 to nothing. Yeah, he's, he's one of the guys that threw four touchdowns in, in one of these games. Yeah. Yeah. Right now they could use him. He's your good. From the eight-yard line, here comes Hanspar. There goes Hanspar, down hard at the 18-yard line. College football on ABC Sports, brought to you by Ford F-Series, the best-selling trucks of built Ford Tough. Pacific Life, I know it is, insurance, investments, use the power of Pacific Life. BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. And Dell. Dan Fouts, who's part of our Monday night crew now, but uh, in the NFL Hall of Fame as a result of his great years with the San Diego Chargers and, of course, his great years at the University of Oregon. Joey Harrington throws hard, pass caught, Peel tied in, making the grab over the middle. Gain is about six yards on the play. Joey Harrington, don't count him out. Over the last five weeks, he has thrown for 1,403 yards. And uh, at home, he's only thrown for 971 yards. But on the road, 1,390. So he has been much stronger on the road than he has at home. Tucker and Howery, his top receivers, have not made a catch yet today. This is Amundsen, the tailback, on second down. Three, getting very little. Boy, what a great play by James Allen. They put him on the end. He just had contained control, and he came hard off the edge and made that tackle. Good read, terrific, terrific form tackle by Allen. Robinson out. Josh Lyon is out. Morris is back in. So this will get you a single back alignment and send three wide out. To the outside on third down and two. He drills Howry and Keenan makes the catch. First down for the Oregon Ducks at the 36 yard line. Boy, he threw that thing hard. Yeah, but Keith, that play was made by Howry. Howry went down and sat down like he was going to do a curl, and all of a sudden he broke off this pattern. Now, watch, he's running a pattern here. Now, he'll break the pattern to separate. That's when he reloads, and when he reloads, Howry comes free over the middle. Nice adjustment by Keenan Howry, who was just going to run a hook, and he sat down. All of a sudden, he went to the open area in the middle. 36-yard line, first down, duck, 17-0, Oregon State. Harrington's pass he is caught by Willis, and Willis will have another first down for the Oregon Ducks. Here's Todd Harris. Well, Keith, moments ago, they talked to Joey Harrington before he took the field. They told him to be patient, pick your spots, and he's doing just that. But i got to tell you, the Oregon sideline is absolutely shell-shocked. A team that is normally very confident and high in each other, they are all just absolutely amazed that they are down 17 to nothing. Keith. Well, they better get rid of their amazement and get involved because they're going to be whipped. Yeah, it's way too early to panic. They just need to find their comfort zone and start getting back into their game plan. They need something before halftime. And here's a pretty good start on that with Maurice Morris. His best run of the day will get Oregon a first down at the Oregon State 39-yard line. Robinson and Cookus made the tackle for the Beavers. Ducks are a first down team. When they can get yardage like that on first down and get Morris going, obviously, they open up their playbook. They become much more effective. If you look at the running back comparison, right now, Morris getting a lot of the load. 11 carries, 64 yards. That's averaging almost six a carry. Simonton, really nothing, absolutely nothing. You see, he hadn't had any success and very little opportunity. Well, the Ducks now moving the team. Harrington goes deep with it for 
Tucker. Does he get a kick? Yes, sir. He does. I think they may have found something, Keith, that's two times in a row they've gone to Hayward Johnson's side, and they've beaten him both times. Well, they can outrun him. He is not the fastest of the fast in that defensive secondary, but he is one of the smartest. But here they just beat him with speed. Well, it was a good get-off, too. He got off the line completely free. He went outside and then beat him. And look at the ball. The ball is just perfectly thrown. You only need one foot down in college. Marshawn Tucker with a great catch there. Good concentration. A little pitter-patter of feet to get out of bounds. Willis and Harry now are going to be seen at the top of your picture. The wideout. Harrington, quarterback throw, touchdown. Ducks are off the board. And taken to the bank, the Ducks are back. Best drive, they played Duck football. It doesn't figure that this is going to be easy for anybody because six of the last seven games have been decided by seven or less points. Watch things open up right now. He stopped, and he'll say, look at this. I mean, it is wide open with the quarterback draw. They were expecting to pass. The wide ass went to the outside, opened up the middle. Point try by Franklin is good. So at 7.38 to go in the first half, it's now just a 10-point Oregon State lead. Exuberance following the victory. There were some ill feelings that are still existing. Felt that there was less security than uh, they had had uh, coming off that. It was uh, Patrick McCall on that carry. And to carry on about the uh, security situation, let's spend a moment with Tom. Well, Keith, that game was back in 98, as you pointed out. They had 250 security guards for that game. Well, this week, Oregon State Athletic Director Mitch Barnhart went down to Oregon and assured Athletic Director Bill Moose that wouldn't happen again, and they have added over 100 security guards. So now we're up to 350, and hopefully we'll see if they can handle the mayhem that's going to surely follow this game. A little quick throw to the outside, complete to Prescott, but a very good defensive play by Bowman. Bowman's as good as it gets on the corner. He missed so much time last year because of that knee injury. He's enjoying every play this year and playing well. But watch how he reads it immediately. No false steps. Comes up and makes that tackle. That's as good as that's an NFL type cornerback play right there. Third down and tackle. seven. A lot of the corners in the NFL just throw their body around and won't wrap their arms. Bowman does. Third down here. And Smith directing his troops. He's got three wideouts at the top of the picture. Goes underneath to Maurer, the tight end, and it bounces off his hands. Matt Smith hit him, but uh, he'd already dropped the ball by the time Smith got there. But he didn't find anybody in that trips up at the top of the screen to throw the ball to, and so Oregon State will have to punt it. Partner, do you have the feeling that the last drive by Harrington when he went four yep. for four and scored the touchdown really yep. turned Old Mo around toward yep. Oregon? Yep. Put on the white shirt here. We'll see if he's still wearing it. Fourth down, Fessler in the punt. Keenan Howard is waiting for it, standing back around the 25-yard line. This is a good punt, a lot of air under. And a fair throw. He didn't throw it. He's going to try to win it. And he takes a lot of abuse as a result, and he goes down at the 24-yard line. On Thanksgiving Friday, ABC Sports has the college football double header for you at 9 Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, Colorado, and Nebraska. That's a big ball game. It has a lot of meaning. That will be at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. You've got Texas A&M and the Texas Longhorns in their tradition. That's all here on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. So now, let's see about the Ducks. They took it down and stuck it in the end zone in the last possession. They start from the 24-yard line with Morris at tailback, and here he comes. He got a very good block on the corner from Josh Line, the fullback, and that opened the door for him to run it to the 42-yard line in the first down. Josh Line having a terrific 
Josh Lyon having a terrific quarter. He threw the block that freed Harrington on the touchdown. On this, it's just a sweep, and you just need a cutoff block. And Lyon got out, and he made it. Boy, they got out quickly, too. Watch this. It's coming around to the right of your screen. He's 47. He needs to cut off the corner. There's the block that springs Morris. Now Morris does the rest with speed. He's playing banged up. But again, when he gains this yardage on first down, it really sets everything else up for the drive. Carroll has come off the field defensively for Oregon State. Yeah, the ball side. The That's good for three yards on the carry by Morris. Morris is 205 pounds. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but having gone through his first season of uh, Division 1A football, he's learned a lot, and he'll probably come back a lot tougher next season. You can see that he's wincing as he comes off the field from that last hit. But look at the rushing yards, Keith. 20 carries, 94 yards for Oregon. 84 of those are Morris. And when they run the football like that effectively, they really feel that eventually in the second half that they will wear down the Oregon State defense. Robinson is in now in relief for Morris at the single back. And Harrington back to throw it. Throws the bullet. It's caught by Harry. And he's going to have another first down for the Ducks. I'll tell you what. Harrington is throwing that fastball right down the pipe. I, uh, Howry may have broken ribs for the time that takes over the way he's sticking it in there. Well, Harrington all of a sudden has found his rhythm, too, and all of a sudden that will build your confidence. He's now hit his five passes, last five passes in a row, and you're right, he's thrown with authority. He's going through a progression. He's not locked on one receiver, and he's finding the open man. Well down at the Oregon State 43, pitch it back to Amundsen. Head of the flag trailing the play as Amundsen gets to the 40. It's going to be a face mask call against Gundy. Offensive lineman got his hand up, tangled in the face mask when he was trying to make his block. A little too high. What happen when you're 6'6 and you're working against a shorter guy? Face mask, personal foul. Offense, 15 yards from the spot of the foul. And keeps this down. That's a killer when you have things going offensively, and now you got to back it up with a personal foul. It'll take the ball back to the 40-yard line. It's an 18-yard penalty, so that'll make it first and 28. The injuries to the offensive line have made those guys better, though. They, they, they've really they've learned all the positions. They've been interchangeable. Right now, they've got their offensive line fairly healthy. They just have to cut down on those penalties. From the 40. Harrington gets rid of it to Amundsen. Amundsen's a very good receiver coming out of the backfield. Darnell Robinson made the tackle for the Beavers, knocking him out. Smart play, too, because they didn't want to go for it all right away. They, they, they put themselves in a huge hole here, try to get it little by little. And by sending Amundsen out of the backfield, they thought, well, we'll get him the ball early try to free him up in some open space and see if he can get some big yards. Beavers jumped out to a 17 to nothing lead. That would be the biggest deficit that the Oregon Ducks have faced the entire season. They'll come back now to score themselves and they'll trail by 10. Second down and 22. Harrington vertical with it this time and it's caught by Collins and Collins will have a third they won't have his first down but he'll put him in a position where possibly they can get it as he threw that ball again very hard some of the newsmen down in the Tallahassee area covering the ballot business were booted from the hotel room <laughs> because they were committed to the football faithful and guess who's going to win that tug of war Third down and five. And it's Willis circling and stopped just short of his first down marker. But there's a penalty flag over here on this side of the field. So all of that may be for naught. And it is. It's against Oregon. So this is the second penalty they have suffered on this possession. Dennis Erickson saying to his troops, decline it. 
It'll bring up fourth down. Offense. Penalties decline. Fourth down. But the key is here, Keith, they're in fourth down or four down area where they can actually afford to go for it here. Or if they come out in a punt formation, the defense better be looking for a fake. Well, Curtis Doerr is a he ran the scout team quarterback work one week during the season, so he knows what to do with the football, having been a quarterback. Doerr is also pretty good at killing the ball deep. Play clock's down to two. They're not going to get this off. They're going to let it go and go ahead and take the five-yard penalty and then go ahead and punt it. Doerr is one of the best in the conference at sticking the ball down inside the 10-yard line. Five-yard penalty. The rest of the officials, I haven't given them all to you. The umpire today is Dennis Angel. Royce Cooley is the headlinesman. Line judge is John Hussey. Field judge is Dan Spriestabach. Side judge is uh, Ron Bernacci. And the back judge is Jack Folliard. And I particularly enjoyed a little while ago Dennis Angel being so agile and getting out of the way. He almost got one over. Ball is snapped short. <laughs> Penalty flag. So well, they go to the playbook, try to find something with a little trickery in it, and it blows up in their face. See what I, Parker, number two on that play. Keith, what I don't understand is why they didn't run that originally when they only needed two yards for the first. They got the play, the delay of game. Pass was thrown from behind the line of scrimmage. The line to game was not reached. First down, 10, Oregon State. Yeah, that's uh, forward lateral. Forward lateral, and it uh, blows up in their face because uh, instead of uh, having them 10 deep if they go ahead and punt it, or whether they, they put it in the air with door throwing it, they don't get anything out of it at all. They just simply turned the ball over at this point to Oregon State in very good field position. Uh, the, the, the delay of game penalty killed him. Yep. So it's first and ten for the Beavers now. They're sitting out on their 39-yard line, and here's another penalty play. You know, Oregon has had nine penalties here in the first half. So Oregon State commits the foul. And Oregon State has had their share of penalties. 246 on the clock. So they restore two seconds to the clock. Here are the BCS standings going into today. Oklahoma, the only undefeated Division 1A team. Florida, Florida State playing tonight. One of those will tumble. Washington is at Washington State at 3.30 this afternoon. Husky's still in the uh, effort trying to get to the Rose Bowl. The ball is given to Simonton. Almost got to the outside, but Michael Collier had his eye on him all the whole way, and he brought him down after a pickup of about four yards. Well, he gets back uh, to the original line of scrimmage, plus one. Only three penalties for Oregon State in this half, nine for, for Oregon. But look at Ken Simonton. Over 1,000 yards his first three years, 49 career touchdown. Leads the Pac-10 in yards per game. He's eighth in the nation. Everything you want in a running back, except for the size. He's only 5'7", 194 pounds, but he's got that low center of gravity. Only a junior. He said yesterday he will be back next season. Jonathan Smith, who's also a junior, goes down the middle of the field with it. A great defensive play by Steve Smith. Saves a touchdown. Hushmanzada had separated and was on his way, but the ball was slapped away by Smith. I think Smith was just baiting him. He knew his speed, and he knew he was going to make a break on the ball. I'm surprised he didn't try to go for the pick. He just got the right hand up there enough to knock it away. Hushmanzada just ran that deep post. Good play by Smith. Well, if he's baiting him, he's, he's uh, I don't want him at my crap table, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Smith throwing behind the intended receiver on this play, and again, it's Ushmanzada. 
<laughs> PJ. You ought to know how to pronounce his name. He'll tell you. And it's not a bad idea to ask him. Because there's a lot of letters in it. Fessler to punt. Lowry waiting. Minute 58 to go in the first half. Good punt. Beauty by Fessler. All the way back to the 12 yard line. Howie looking for some daylight. He's taken down at the 13 yard line. Great open field tackle by Terrence Gray. So the Ducks will get the ball back at the 13 yard line with a minute and 47 seconds to play in the first half and trailing 17 to 7. Beautiful sight. What a perfect day for football. 32 degrees when we kicked off this afternoon. This is Amundsen. Two yards to the 15. Duan Edwards, Edwards, who's a young guy. Just reading that thing, fighting his block, making the tackle. Guys are huge. You know that we talk about they're young. 6'3, 270 pounds, and he's one of the smaller guys up front. Comes from Columbus. Second down, eight. Number 15. Harrington. That good? No, hit the ground. Short hop to Keenan Howard. Keith, that breaks his streak. He had hit nine in a row, throws that one a little bit short, and Howie had to short hop it. But Harrington really in a rhythm now. I'm just about gone in the first half. Good, we'll see it right here before Howie comes up. Howie covers it up pretty nicely, though, and tries to get his hands under it. You can see it short hop and skip. Josh Lyon comes out now. That'll get another wide receiver into the ball game. Amundsen is the single back. Throw it underneath to Amundsen. And a solid tackle by James Allen. James Allen, who had so much trouble with his back, back spasms all summer and going into the season, finally got some acupuncture, and it straightened him out. Got a flag down. Probably uh, get a... Sportsmanlike call, unsportsmanlike call on it for celebrating. Keith, you're talking about Allen. What a game he's having. That's his fifth tackle this this afternoon already in the first half. Just flying around. After the play, dead ball, unsportsmanlike defense, 15 yard penalty. That gets a growl out of the Beaver home folks. It was fourth down and eight, so that's going to give them a first down, obviously. It does not please the man in the black hat. And it really shouldn't, and I'll tell you why. Because you've got a quarterback with a hot hand and 55 seconds to play in the half. This, this crew, I told you way back at the beginning of the ball game, this crew throws a lot of flags. Well, in a game like this, too, that'll warrant a... The officials, to, they'll look at it. They'll try to maintain control in the ball game. They'll, yep. they'll do it gonna, with the flags. They're not going to let you show off at all. No. You're going to play it right down to the letter. Ball is on the 29. 55 seconds. Oregon has two timeouts and a quarterback with a hot hand. They've got to utilize the sidelines. Goes in the middle and the ball is not out of the hand. Of, uh, Justin Field, the tight end. Darnell Robinson, number five, the man that laid the lick on. Boy, Howard was on the outside, too, up by the 30-yard line, and he just puts his hands up in the air to Harrington and says, hey, what are you looking at? I was wide open. Look at the total yards this, this first half. Oregon, 172, or this quarter, rather, 24 plays and 172 yards. And remember, he had that streak of nine straight completions. Oregon State owned the first quarter. That's the second. And 51 seconds. 
thrown underneath, and Amundsen falls down. And he had a little blocking help. He might have been able to make something out of that, but he couldn't keep his balance. And the clock is running along at 35 seconds. Well, Harrington thought it was set up perfectly. And he says, come on, we've got to keep our feet. Clock continues to run down to 20 seconds. And I guess they're just going to let it go and go to the clubhouse and talk about things and hope that they can still find that magic that served them so well in the second half through the last half of the season. This could be your last play. They stay it on the ground, and that will do it. As we run out of time in the first half of play with Oregon State leading Oregon by a score of 17 to 7. ABC Sports presentation of college football. And back after this message and the word from our ABC station. <laughs>